I want to start by asking you how you got uh, into this world. And I guess part of my question is that you know, but my perception is that's a very kind of closed community. So I, I wonder how you got into it and, and, uh, and uh, got them to allow you to film. Well, um, the first time I was in New Orleans, uh, Matt Reznikoff was sitting over there many years ago. I, um, a good friend of ours, Bill Wilkowski, introduced us to uh, Michael P. Smith, who was a very well-known photographer who had been documenting the Mardi Gras Indians and all of the street parade cultures of New Orleans for many years. And uh, we met him, and <coughs> I was um, immediately struck by um, the profundity of the Mardi Gras Indian culture and the beauty of it. and. Uh, and, and just thought, well, it would be wonderful to make a film about this, but um, I'd never made a film. And so it was uh, quite some years before I got around to it. And then uh, in subsequent trips to New Orleans, I uh, got to uh, go out with Mike Smith on, uh, well, the first event that I ever went to was the St. Joseph's Night Parade. And I found that completely magical and enchanting, and um, and then started to speak to Mike about um, my interest in making a film, and uh, he suggested that 2D would be a great subject. So then I made yet another trip to New Orleans, and when I called 2D up, he New Orleans is like a, a small town in a lot of ways, and he had already heard that I was in town, and. Uh, he knew I'd been there for three days, and so he said, well, what took you so long? <laughs> and so then he invited me to come over and, um, you know, and, and talk to him about the film, and by the end of our phone conversation, I knew that he would be the, the main character of the film. Um, we can uh, make this interactive and take questions from the audience. If you have one, uh, raise your hand. Yes, in the middle. How old was he? How old was he? Yeah. Uh, well, he was, uh, when I first met him, I guess um, about 78, and he passed away at the age of 82. Right here. Yeah, I never asked you this question before, but um, now seeing the film in its entirety, have any of these suits been archived or placed in museums? They really are masterpieces. Well, I think, um, I think the Smithsonian may have one of them. And Ripley's, believe it or not, has one of two D suits, but that's not really our kind. Um, so it, it's it's a very um, yeah. I mean, it's a very important question. What's going to come of these suits? And there was talk um, some years ago. Daryl Montana wanted to build a museum, and um, but I don't think that that's going to come to pass. What was the impetus behind the police? coming after them on that night in 05, and what has the police presence been like in terms oh. of what Yeah, thanks for asking that. Um, well, there was, uh, you know, there's there's been uh, a long <coughs> history which Tootie narrates at the end, and, you know, and I think the agitation and the pain that he expressed, you know, is, um, really was too much for him, obviously. So. Um, but it was uh, a long history of, um, of antagonism. And so uh, <coughs> since then, and most recently, I mean, actually since that meeting where Tootie died, nothing had really happened because Katrina just completely uh, reordered everything in New Orleans and a lot of things that seemed pressing before then never really got addressed. But very recently, uh, I understand that there have now uh, been some efforts made on the part of the police. The police are actually interested in undergoing a kind of sensitivity training, and some people I know are developing a video um, to try to help the police understand better uh, the signific significance of the culture. And actually, one thing that was just uh, changed as of this Mardi Gras today is that um, Mardi Gras Indians are, were permitted now to stay out on the street till midnight, so they're probably still out. And, um, and in the past, um, in, in Tootie's neighborhood, usually by uh, dusk, you would hear sirens, and there was a, it was a kind of a roundup 
it was like a encircling of the Indians, and the sirens were so loud they would generally drown out the music, and and then people would be sort of forced to have to go home. And it was very, it was it was like always a very ugly ending to you know a wonderful day. So, um, so you know some positive change is, is actually underway right now. Lisa, the film leaves off at a kind of fragile moment in the history. <clears throat> After Katrina, you, you see a lot of people talking about trying to keep these uh, traditions alive. Now, there were seven years after that uh, point. Um, what's your sense of, of how well that uh, tradition is, is continuing? Well, I think the culture is very, very resilient and healthy. Um, and uh, Bob Thompson, who's, who's uh, Who's in the film? You know, one uh, remarked to me once, and I, I mean, he's made made these comments very public too, that you know that African cultures have this built-in resilience, and certainly, um, you know, the African cultures of the New World, you know, manifest that very strongly, and um, and I think it's the feeling of of many. I mean, other Mardi Gras Indians have expressed this to me, uh, the same idea that. Uh, if there were only you know three people left in New Orleans, there would still be Mardi Gras Indian culture. So I think um, my my own experience is that after Katrina, there was a kind of strengthening, and I think um, people outside of the culture and a lot of uh, white people who had maybe been more on the sidelines in the past, I think really looked to the Indians for um, a spiritual uplift after Katrina, and I and I noticed after 2005 that, um, that of many of the events and the, the practices that take place before Mardi Gras were attended by uh, more people outside the community and, um, and more white people. And so I, I think that, in a, that since Katrina, Mardi Gras Indians have really gained a kind of um, popularity that maybe they didn't have before and some of the fear has abated that people may have had in the past. Yeah, over here. Uh, yeah, I was just curious if um, the uh, respect that Judy had in the community was um, representative at all of uh, the community's ability to um, respect elders um, more than we might see in other populations. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's part of it, and in some sense, I'd say that that's. That's uh, a southern tradition too, but um, very much um, an African American tradition, and uh, and very very evident in his community. There was a, a lot of respect for for him, um, and uh, another I've, I've seen it you know toward other elders as well. Thank you very much for coming, and thanks especially to Lisa Tasman for bringing up this film on Mardi Gras.